One, two, three. Ooh, interesting. Take a look at this. This didn't happen with my other mixture. Guten gardening, everybody. In today's video, we're gonna be showing you how to make a liquid calcium fertilizer using quail eggs and vinegar. Calcium is definitely an important nutrient for plant growth as it really helps to affect the structure of the cells of your plants and you've probably seen the impact of a lack of calcium getting through to plants like tomatoes where you get that dark black spot at the ends of your fruits. Now a lot of times in those instances you probably have enough calcium in your soil already but if you're not watering consistently you can see effects that look like there isn't enough calcium. Now that all being said, there is definitely the possibility of creating your own calcium fertilizer in a pretty simple way. And we're gonna do it for the first time today. And I'm telling you that it's our first time doing this because I want you to understand how simple this process is and I wanna walk you through it. It's entirely possible that there will be things that we do in this video that we will want to change even slightly in the future, but this is gonna give us a great baseline. And quite frankly, I think this is going to be a good tutorial for how to create a simple, effective liquid calcium fertilizer. So let's go ahead and get into what we're doing. Now, if you've never seen any of our quail content here on the channel, you should definitely check that out. But we have about a hundred quail here where we get plenty of eggs for our entire family here. And one of the things we've said we love about raising our quail is that we can use every part of this process effectively for our family. So the meat, the food part of the process for sure, but we can also use the quail egg shells. And we're gonna be using those today to create this calcium fertilizer. One of the cool things about quail egg shells though is that they actually contain, even if only slightly, the highest percentage of calcium carbonate for game birds, slightly higher than chickens. So, you know, we have them on hand, they're gonna be perfect for what we're trying to create here today. Now, as we start this process, of course, we have to gather up our egg shells. Now, in our case, we save all of our egg shells anyway, but this might require you to get your hands on some eggshells or just save them over a couple of day period, depending on how many eggs you eat. Our goal is going to be to have about a half a cup of ground up eggshell powder. Although again, we don't necessarily need that much to get started with this process. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna make sure that we've washed out our eggshells. And I can tell you this from personal experience, when we're saving our eggs, the first thing we wanna do is to make sure that we've washed them out as we're saving them. And we usually keep ours in a container off to the side, but if you don't wash your eggshells as you're saving them, the smell, even after just a day or two, can become very putrid. So we try to wash everything out, get all the, the membrane out as much as we can and any kind of yolk that may be left inside the eggshell. Now, for those of you who are saving chicken eggs, the removal of the membrane is probably a more important part of this process, you know, that, that thin layer on the inside of the shell. Now, once we have enough saved, and in our case, it's pretty easy to do, because we go through about 36 quail eggs per meal, per scramble for our family of four. Once we have enough and we're ready, we're gonna go ahead and put that in the oven for about 20 minutes at 200 degrees Fahrenheit. And the reason we're getting these completely dry, well, for one, it helps with the process of, of grinding this up into a powder, or even if you don't plan to do it as a powder and you just wanna break it up into smaller pieces, it really helps with that. It also helps to remove that inner membrane as well. Now it's gonna take a lot longer than 20 minutes if you're doing multiple layers. But as you can see, I have mine laid out here on a simple baking sheet, and so it's a pretty quick process. If you need to give it more time, give it more time. I've even seen people who go ahead and prepare this on the stove top, but we're just doing ours in the oven to dry it out nicely and neatly. Next up, we're gonna grind our eggshells up. Now there are a couple of ways that you can do this. If you have a mortar and pestle set up and you wanna take a little time that way, Put the eggs down in there and grind. If you want to, you could actually use a rolling pin to roll across the surface of the eggs. If I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna use something like butcher paper or something along those lines to create a barrier so I'm not actually rolling my pin into the eggshells themselves. But for us, because I'm going to create a powder today, I'm going to use our old blender. And I say old blender for a reason. This thing that we have here is many years old, but the container, the plastic container itself that we're grinding this in would be absolutely scratched up beyond recognition if I use something new. So I've got something old that, I, that works perfectly well and it takes a little bit to grind up. But once I've ground this up after uh, you know, 30, 40 seconds or so, I've got a really nice 
fine powder. So let me explain why we're creating a powder instead of just breaking it into small pieces because I've seen all different kinds of experiments of people doing this. Some people talk about how the grinding up into the powder could slow the process down but from a reaction lens and that's what we're going for when we're having the eggshells reacting with the vinegar it makes more sense to me that the reaction would happen faster if we give more surface area and we'd actually be able to basically pull out the calcium acetate, which is what we're getting out of this, that's what the liquid fertilizer is going to be, that pulling that out through the interaction of the vinegar and the eggshell makes more sense that it'll be faster with more surface area. Now here's where things get pretty interesting to me in terms of this experiment. And I think we're going to have to practice this a good bit more as we go through this process. Because I've seen anywhere from a three to one to a 10 to one ratio in terms of how much eggshell you need to vinegar. And we're actually gonna be doing this experiment in two different ways. I'm gonna set up one where I have just plain water and I add in my eggshells because I believe that the water over time can leach out the calcium as well. I do think it's going to take a good bit longer because there's not that same chemical reaction. And I'm going to set up one with the vinegar and the eggshell because I know that that process, we're going to see reaction really quickly as we get this process started. But again, the question is, what's the actual ratio that makes the most sense? Because we don't want to waste our eggshells. But at the same time, we don't want to put too few eggshells in because then we're not going to be able to complete the entire reaction. Now, what I will tell you is, and I'm about to pour the eggshells into the vinegar so you can see what that reaction looks like. The science behind this goes beyond the scope of this video. I'm not a scientist, but I am going to try my best to do a little test here to see what the calcium level is prior to the experiment and then what we've got in this liquid after the experiment. So. This is gonna take a couple of days, but I'm really excited to show you that piece and we can see if we can really view the reaction using a calcium test. Again, this is our first time doing this, so that's part of the learning of this experiment. I know for a fact that this does work. I just wanna see for myself what those levels look like. Now, what I ended up doing was taking three cups of vinegar and my understanding is it doesn't really matter what kind of vinegar you use. We use just a standard 5% white vinegar but I went ahead and I added three cups of that vinegar into a jar. And here's where I learned my first lesson of this experiment, which is if you overfill the jar or you don't have a big enough container, I mean, I knew there would be a reaction, but that reaction, especially because we have it as powder, which means more of it's interacting with the vinegar, that reaction is going to be quick. Uh, well, you're going to see what happens there. It's definitely going to have the possibility to overflow and make a mess. But that being said, it's not really a big problem here. But I went ahead and added just under a half a cup of our ground up eggshells to this. So we've got about a six or seven to one ratio here. And the process, the interaction, the reaction between the eggshells, that calcium, the ions being pulled out of the eggshells and the vinegar, that interaction was immediate. Now I do know that the bubbles, all of those bubbles are carbon dioxide and that the byproduct of this reaction is water and carbon dioxide. So that's where we get the liquid calcium because we're gonna get that calcium acetate and we're gonna get the water there at the top once everything stops reacting and settles back down to the bottom. That's when I'm gonna to have to go through and strain this out. Now, what I noticed is that the reaction process lasted this aggressively for a couple of hours, but by the next day, things had slowed down a great deal and really, by about 36 hours on, I didn't see any movement back and forth, up and down with the eggshells interacting. And I did have to come in and mix it a couple of times just to be sure, because again, these particles are so fine. So I came in and I mixed up the eggshells and I wasn't getting any additional reaction. I came in and I stirred this up quite a few times. And now we're looking at today, which is about four days into this experiment. So we've had four days of this resting and I've read anything from five to 10 days, two to four days. There's a lot of different discussion about how long you have to wait, but four days is where we're gonna go ahead and strain out our mixture. I'm actually gonna leave the water mix for a good bit longer because I want to see how that really processes out the calcium and what that looks like. So that's, that's a separate entity to itself right now. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and strain out the vinegar eggshell mix. And I can tell you right now, when I'm smelling this, that the smell of vinegar, which was incredibly strong at the beginning, is barely there at all now. And I'm just going to be using a coffee filter to do the straining. It's gonna take a little bit of time to do that. You could also use a cheesecloth if you like. You just wanna get rid of these bigger solid materials. We wanna be left with the liquid because that liquid is the fertilizer that we can use and we can use that to spray as a foliar spray. So we can actually just spray it on the leaves and get the calcium in. Now, if we do that, if we do spray this as a foliar spray, we wanna do this if we're talking about outdoors, we want to do it in the morning or in the evening so that the sun's not going to pound on it right away and the leaves have time to absorb that calcium in. Or of course, we can also water around the base of our plants. One thing that's very important though is this is going to be incredibly concentrated. So you're going to want to dilute this and there are actually tables that show you the amount of this fertilizer per gallon. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use a calcium test kit and we're going to see if we can figure out the calcium level of this mix. So what I'm going to do now is try to test the results of what we have created. And I'm going to do this by looking at three different solutions. This is just natural spring water. That natural spring water is actually what I used to put into this second container. And in this second container, we have the natural spring water and some of our eggshells. And I said that you should be able to leach some of the calcium out of these eggshells using just spring water, but I don't anticipate that after four days, it's close to the degree of calcium creation, liquid calcium creation we have in our solution that was the eggshells and vinegar. So I'm gonna test each of these individually to try to determine the level of calcium. And even if I can't get the level of calcium specifically, what I hope to be able to see here is a clear difference in terms of the amount of calcium. Now this calcium test is actually a calcium test for aquariums, for saltwater aquariums. So I'm not saying that this is the best test, but I still think that we can get some results out of here that indicate the level of calcium in our solution. So let me briefly explain how this test works. I have a little bottle here and I'm gonna fill this up to the five milliliter test line, which is this line right here for each of our solutions. And I'm gonna start with our natural spring water. Once I've done that, I'm going to add 10 drops of this test solution number one. I'm gonna add 10 drops to it, shake it up for about 10 seconds, and then drop by drop, I'm going to be adding test solution number two. And here's what's supposed to happen. The solution in here should start to turn pink and then perhaps purple, but eventually should end up a blue color. And the blue color we're looking for is supposed to be something like this, which is to say a very clear blue. And then there is a chart. And this chart indicates that the fewer the drops it takes to turn your solution blue from its initial color, the less milligrams per liter or parts per million of calcium you have in your solution. Now, again, I'm not suggesting that this is the best test kit for this. I just wanna see if we can tell a difference between the three levels. And I have a sneaking suspicion that we'll be able to. So let's start first with our spring water. All right, I've got my gloves on. I don't know exactly what's in these, but I don't wanna run the risk. I mean, it says keep out of the reach of children, which is always a good indicator. We gotta be careful with it. I've got my spring water here. This is just natural spring water. So this is going to act as our control for this experiment. I've got five milliliters in here and I'm gonna go ahead with solution number one and I'm gonna add 10 drops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten 10 drops of solution number one. I'm gonna cap it and I'm gonna shake this up and for about 10 seconds, we're gonna see there shouldn't be much in, of any coloration here. There's no change in color. That's just that first solution we put in. And then I start adding solution number two. Now, the fewer the drops this takes, the less the amount of calcium in this water. So here we go, one drop, we go one drop. Right now, everything is perfectly clear. I shake it up and after one drop, Oh, I don't know if you can see this well. I've got it up against a white background intentionally. Hopefully you can see that it's a little bit pinkish in color. So that's already, we're seeing a transformation in color after just one drop. Let's see what happens after two drops. 
after two drops oh i can see it as i'm shaking it i can see the change in color here after two drops we've got a purplish color now the end goal here is to get to a blue color this is somewhat blue but i would say let's go another drop because we still see a bit of a purplish color and remember this is spring water it's not filtered water it's just spring water and our third drop gets us to a blue color now i could probably go a little oh let's see it's still changing as i shake i i think that this is a decent shade of blue i'm gonna put one more drop in here and get it to a fourth drop of our solution and i think this is where we're going to say we've got plenty of blue here this is a nice blue color this blue color now puts us at about 60 to 80 milligrams per liter or 60 to 80 parts per million of calcium so now i've washed everything out and i'm going to go ahead and take some of the solution that we have here this is the water so it's the same spring water and the eggshells and we're going to see if there's a difference i'm going to dip this syringe again i've tried to clean everything out here to keep it as sterile as possible we're going to dip our syringe in and we're going to fill this up to that five milliliter line once more we're going to add our 10 drops one two three four five six seven eight nine ten drops of solution number one give it a shake all right there we go nice little shake in here it's a little bit off color but that's just because of the powder of the shells they're gonna discolor this a little bit and i'm gonna start with two drops here one two two drops of solution number two because i have a sneaking suspicion that this is definitely going to have taken some calcium out of those eggshells although it probably will have to take a good bit longer yeah see it's it's just starting to turn color a little bit it's not even really pink yet i'm going to add two more drops one two two more drops we shake it up so we're at four drops right now and we're starting to see the transition i can see it here we're getting pink maybe a little bit a little tinge of blue we're going to bring it up to six drops right now so we've got a total of six drops in here and i start to see the transition to blue it's not as deep of a blue though as our plain water i think we need i'm going to go with two more drops here and see if we get it to oops one two i'm going to get it two more drops here and see if we get to that same level of blue that we had yeah there we go so we're at eight drops here and we got to this nice blue color so eight drops indicates about 160 parts per million or 160 milligrams per liter of calcium so that's a pretty clear difference between just the spring water but now let's go ahead and take a look at our other mix all right we have our last solution here which is our vinegar and eggshell solution I'm gonna go ahead and get my 5 ml. I've cleaned everything out once again. Just make sure it's as sterile as possible. Fill it right up to the line. All right, we've got our solution number one. We're gonna put 10 drops in, just like we've done for everything else. One, two, three, ooh, interesting. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Take a look at this. This didn't happen with my other mixture see that white stuff forming at the bottom i don't know exactly what that means i'm gonna go ahead and shake it up and see what happens oh it seems to be clearing out as i'm agitating the mixture here it seems to be looking clear just like the other ones a few more bubbles at the top but interesting all right all right let's see what happens we've got bottle number two it didn't take that many drops in our other two solutions to get this to turn blue. Let's go ahead and see what happens. I'm going to add my first drop. Remember with our spring water, it turned pink right away. Um, one didn't do anything here. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to add number two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm just going out on a limb here to say we've added ten drops here, which is now more than anything else. And let's see if we start to see that shift in color from our clear to pink to, I mean, <laughs> there's no difference at all that I can see. That's, that's, that's the same color after 10 drops. Let's boost this up a little bit more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I just doubled it up to 20 drops here. All right, let's see what 20 drops brings. Now, 20 drops is supposed to be 400 milligrams per liter or 400 parts per million. We're almost to the edge of the scale. I'm starting to see, here, I'll hold it up to the side. I'm starting to see maybe a tiny bit of a pink tinge. Now, this scale only goes up to 26 drops, which is just over 500. It's supposed to be 520 milligrams per liter. So I'm going to take it one, two, three, four, five five, six. I'm going to take it first to the edge of the scale. Okay. We're right at the edge. Now, this is the most that this test will test for. And I, I mean, I'm starting to see a little pink here, but there's not much of anything. Remember after five or six drops in the one that we soaked with water, we saw it change over to blue. All right, I'm going to go 27, 28, 29, 30. So we're at 30 drops now, and I'm going to take it up to 40. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 40 drops. We're off the scale. I just want to see. I want to see if we can get some color change at all. I mean, this is indicative of a massive amount of calcium if, if the scale is to be believed. And I don't see why it wouldn't be. Okay, yeah, now I'm seeing, now I'm seeing a little bit more of a pink color, but there is no, not, not even the beginnings of a transition to purple or blue. Now, I said at the beginning that this might not be the perfect calcium test for this solution. And you can see I mean, we're off the charts basically from my reading. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute this much like I would if I were using it as a foliar spray or around the roots. And one of the articles I read before doing this process said that three quarters of a teaspoon is the amount that you would add to one gallon of water. And I'm going to go ahead and take three quarters of a teaspoon of our mix, which is just over three milliliters. And I'm going to place this right into our water and I'm going to shake it up nicely. And maybe this extreme dilution puts us back on the chart and we'll see what we've got using this test again. All right, let's get in here and get our five mil of our diluted solution into our little container here. Let's add our drops. Well, notice that there's no cloudiness like there was the last time I added to the solution. Let's get this shaken up. About 10 seconds of shaking. All right, here we go. Solution number two, one drop at a time to see how this reacts. First drop, maybe a slight tinge, maybe a slight tinge in color changing to pink a little bit. Second drop, I'm gonna go ahead and add two drops here, get us to our third drop. Make the drop fall. Well, that's a grand total of four drops there actually, because we got a combined drop. Didn't mean to go that far, but that's all right. Four drops. And we see the shift to pink. All right, see, we didn't see that transition earlier. We got that shift to pink now. It's a nice bright pink four drops. So now we've got five drops, six drops, six drops added in a nice deep pink. Now we haven't changed to blue yet. So we still got that higher concentration in there. Six drops, seven, eight drops. Let's go eight. Shake it up a little. Oh, there it is. 
Transitioning over to a purplish color. Let's see if it goes the whole way to blue. Blue. Uh, it's, yeah, it's still a little purple to me. I'm just going to put in a ninth drop here. Let's see if we get a little bit blue or blue. Yeah, this is what it is right there. Okay, so nine drops in. That's a nice blue color right there. There's no purple tinge to that. Nine drops indicates a level of 180 milligrams per liter or 180 parts per million of calcium, which is higher than we had, about three times higher than just the plain water. And that's diluted at three quarters of a teaspoon to one gallon of water to get those results. Now again, there's probably a better calcium test out there, but this clearly shows me that we have created a very concentrated calcium fertilizer that we can now use. And the benefit of this being a liquid calcium fertilizer and a type of calcium, that calcium acetate, is a type of calcium that plants can readily and quickly absorb. So something like this, if you're having a problem with the calcium levels in your soil and you need to add calcium, this is an easy and highly inexpensive way to go ahead and create an incredible calcium fertilizer. Well, we hope you enjoyed this video today. That was awesome. This was a phenomenal experience. And I think we can refine this even further. To be honest, I think we can definitely refine this procedure. We can fix our ratio of eggshells to vinegar, get that a little bit more precise, especially since we're talking about the ground version versus not. You know, that's something else we might want to experiment in the future, either just breaking apart the shells into small pieces or keeping them as powder and see which one does better. What I can tell you though, is I'm very pleased with these results and I'm excited to see how beneficial this can be in our garden. Well, if you enjoyed today's video, don't forget to give us a like, leave us a comment, remember to share and subscribe, and most importantly, remember, when you're with us, you are good to grow.